All right, I'm fishing today on a rare Saturday. I don't normally fish on the weekends, but my wife's out of town, so I'm not gonna sit at home. <laughs> and I've come back into the marsh, getting kind of a late start this morning, definitely later than I normally am. Slept in just a little bit, but the targets for the day are redfish and bass, and I am throwing a bait that looked really good to me in my latest pool test. Actually, it won the pool test, a Yum Christy Craw and I'm dragging it across the top. As you can tell, that sun has not popped up yet. So I'm hoping to steal a few bites from a bass or a red before the sun gets up. The tide is falling. We're at the end of the falling tide. Water's still fairly high. We've had some, some light east winds the last few days. It's got this water pushed up a little bit, but man, there's some bait in this area. <laughs> Just an insane amount. There's got to be some fish in here. Just got to see if we can find what they want. Oh, something's chasing me. Oh, come on, blow up on me. Man, why'd you chicken out? Oh, there's a hit. A little half-hearted blow up. Definitely a small bass. So the water temp back here in the marsh today is 86 degrees. It's now the first week of August. I've seen water temps back here in the low 90s. So it's actually a little bit cooler than in a typical year. We'll see if that inspires the fish to feed. The sun is just about to pop out. There's a cloud covering it. Really pretty much the only cloud in the sky. Once that happens, this bait's going back on the deck. Well, I just saw a little tiny shrimp popping. That's the first shrimp I've seen this year. Well, this summer. Definitely a little white shrimp. Good harbinger of fall. Look at that sunrise. Man, is that beautiful. It's actually a little bit next to the cloud. All right, I feel like we should have gotten a bite by now. I think there's fish around here. So I'm gonna make a change. They don't want the Christy Craw today. Let's see if we can find something they do want. So I made the switch to a pro's choice soft stick bait. I've been having a lot of success with this bait lately. Got a lot of confidence in it right now. With it still being early, I'd like to be throwing a, a spinner bait or a crank bait, but the water's still up, even though it's the end of this falling tide. And so I really can't see the edges of the grass bed really well. So I feel like this gives me a better chance of not getting hung up with grass and catching a few fish. All right, it seems like there's a more defined grass edge here. So let me see if I can get away with that spinner bait. I'm throwing an H&H &H Gold number four spinner team with a quarter ounce death grip jig head and a shrimp creole matrix shad. The deadly marsh combo. And what I like to use this bait for is just to cover some water and try and find fish. That pro's choice soft stick bait's a great marsh bait, but it's not a good search bait. You just have to fish it too slowly. Now I feel confident there are fish in this area just because of the amount of bait. There's got to be some fish in here. So far, they're not biting what I'm throwing, though. Just got to figure them out. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. All right, back to the pro's choice. With all the bait and activity I'm seeing, I just cannot believe there's no fish here. Impossible to believe. Oh, a bee. Nice. It's a great thing about marsh fishing. It will keep you humble. What worked yesterday will probably not work today. And you gotta figure these fish out every day. To me, that's what makes it so much fun. So far today, I have not figured them out. There's a fish. What are you, a red or a nice bass? Oh, it's a nice bass. There we go, there we go. Fish number one of the day. Right on that point, right where he should have been. It's a good chunky fish for the marsh. All right.
there's a fish. Oh, another beautiful bass. Get in the boat, boy. All right. All right. Starting to get a few bites. I love it. I love it. I love it. I gave him forever. Again, I kind of thought I was hung in a little bit of grass. It's a great thing about fishing these weightless baits. The fish almost never spit them. Look at this thing about to fly over me. What is this guy doing? Well, this is a first for me. That's crazy. So I got a couple of bass, which obviously I'm happy about, but normally in the month of August, the bass fishing in these marshes is not the best. So water temperature just gets too high. And of course, Louisiana's marshes are very, very shallow. Now the redfish couldn't care less. They don't mind hot water at all. So I'd like to run across a red. It's kind of what I was hoping to do today. Don't mind the bass, certainly, but I'm still hoping to run across a redfish. The last redfish I caught, I grilled him on the half shell and I covered it with pesto. I'm growing some basil currently. And of course, late summer, the basil is big. <laughs> the basil bush is big. So we got plenty of that. And pesto is just one of the best things on earth. Goes really well with fish. So hopefully we're lucky enough to catch a red. And as clear as this sky is, and as calm as the winds are, a smart strategy might be to go deep in the marsh and go find some shallow ponds, trying to sight fish some reds. It's not really my game. It's not what I do well. But it would definitely be productive today, you gotta think. That's gotta be a redfish. That has got to be a redfish. Look at this. Oh, spooked him. Now I've come back into the marsh. I looked on my GPS and found a little pond back here that looks pretty good. <laughs> Who knows what the clarity is going to be like, but I'm going to fish my way back here, hopefully bump into a redfish on the way. So far, it's been a pretty tough day. And this area, like what we fished earlier and what we've run through today, is loaded with bait. Seems to be all mullet. I've only seen one shrimp today, and it was a small one. It was probably about 100 count. I'm sure there are some others in the marsh, so those white shrimp typically get way back in those little shallow ponds. They don't come through these bayous until they're, until they're moving out. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. Oh, it's a little bass. Oh, God, I can't even get them in. All right, I'm back in this little pond. The water looks pretty good. I mean, it's beautiful water, but for sight fishing, it's not perfect. I'm sure guys who do this all the time could see fish in here. But it's not ideal for me. I'm going to say it's got about a foot of visibility. But I'm hoping as I get back in this little pocket here, it'll clean up. As it, the water's moving this way, it should, get, it should get filtered by all this grass. And back here, just like everywhere we've been today, copious amounts of mullet. Incredible. This episode of Marsh Mad Mass On brought to you by H&H &H Lore Company. And by Fitzgerald Fishing. And by Sportsman's Outfitters. And by Bill Lewis. And by Death Grip Jig Heads. Oh, what are you, a bass? Just kind of blind casting this spinnerbait. Wasn't expecting a bass. And he's not a big one, but broke the monotony. Oh, what are you? You a red? Nope, looks like a, oh, it looks like a small red. Yep, our first red of the day, but he's not gonna make the cut. He will not 
be covered in pesto tonight, but it's a step in the right direction. It's the right species, just not the right size. Appreciate the fight, little buddy. Now get out there and grow. All right, so we finally made it into some water. It's not perfect, probably an eight as far as sight casting goes. But I feel like I could see a fish in this as long as that sun will stay out. So far, it's been playing peekaboo. Tell you, some of the mullet back here are absolutely world class. They keep fooling me into thinking they're redfish because they're so big. It's not grass. It's a pain, but it's a sign you're in the right area. Stingray. That's a good sign. There's gotta be some redfish around. Man, what a brutally tough day. I have fished very, very hard today with little to show for it. But hey, it's August, right? Definitely without question, in my opinion, the toughest fishing month of the year, bar none. And today solidified that thought for me. I put a few fish in the boat, but man, I covered a lot of water and fished very hard. I found a lot of bait, found gorgeous water. It's definitely moving, got a big tide range today. If you had told me I'd have these conditions and have this much trouble putting a redfish in the boat, I would not have believed you. But that's the way it went. The good news is I got a handful of bass in the box, and that recipe that I talked about works just as good with bass as it does with redfish. So I'm gonna call it a day and head home, get these fish cleaned up, and show you how I make my pesto fish in a half shell. Trust me, if you try it, you're gonna love it. All right, see you in my kitchen. All right, since the redfish quest didn't go all that well, I'm gonna show you how to do this recipe with bass. It's just as good with bass, if not better. But you can definitely do this with redfish. Any fish that you can cook on a half shell, a good firm textured fish, it works very, very well with. First and most important ingredient is basil. And hopefully you have a basil bush at home. If you don't, you can buy it in a store. Definitely a lot more expensive. But it's really, really cheap to grow at home. I've got one outside and it's nice and full. Late in the summer, it's been growing all summer. So first order of business, go harvest some basil. All right, so I pulled all our ingredients out and put them on the counter. Of course, we got our basil, the main ingredient, very, very important. Then we've got some Parmesan cheese, some cashews, just one clove of garlic, and some olive oil. Now, I'm gonna take you through the process. It could not be more simple, and it could not be more delicious. Trust me, you're gonna love it. All right, first we're gonna throw in our nuts. Then I have one clove of garlic. And if you've seen any of my previous recipes, you know I don't measure anything. I just kind of wing it. It's kind of the fun of cooking. So don't worry about measuring. Just go with what feels right. All right, so you definitely want to go with the fresh block of cheese rather than, say, like a shaker of cheese. That's not nearly as tasty. This stuff's really good. And you know what? Nobody's ever said, you know what? This pesto has too much cheese. So I like to put a lot in. All right, that may be enough, but we'll see. So first off, we're gonna chop this up. Get that good and mixed. All right, it's in good shape. And then we're gonna throw in our basil. I'm gonna put in about half, get it good and mixed up, and then put in the other half. All right, then you want to kind of drizzle your oil in. This particular food processor has a hole on the top, so you can do exactly that. All right, so this is what we've come out with, and looking at it now, I really kind of feel like it's not enough pesto, so I'm gonna grab some basil and throw some in there. It's fine to add it at this point. It's not gonna hurt anything. All right, now this part is so easy. Anybody can do it, literally. I've already lit the grill. It's heating up right now. I've got six bass fillets. All right, so we're just gonna coat them with a little bit of seafood seasoning. I got some Morton Seasonal. I always switch up the seasoning I use just to get a variety of taste. All right, and the next secret seems kind of lowbrow, but it's actually something I learned from Tenny Flynn, who is executive chef at GW Finns. If you're from out of town, you probably have no idea what GW Fins is, but it's the most exclusive fish restaurant in all of New Orleans. Absolutely fantastic. If you ever get a chance to come here, you gotta go there. But anyway, this is what Tenny does when he cooks fish on a half shell. Watch. All right, after he puts his seasoning on, he sprays the fish with Pam. Just good old fashioned Pam. 
And the reason you do that is so you can put the fish flesh side down on the grill and it won't stick. You do that for about 45 seconds or a minute, then you flip it over and you cook it skin side down just until it flakes with a fork. The worst thing you can do with any fish on a half shell is overcook it. Don't overcook it. I mean, it's a big mistake that people make. You don't want to overcook it. Go to your thickest part of the filet, stick a fork in it. If it flakes at all, it's done. Take it off and bring it in. All right, you put the fish flesh side down first. Makes it taste better and definitely look a whole lot better. All right, when the fish is close to done, which it is, I like to add just a little bit of butter to keep it nice and moist. It's getting really close to being finished. I bet it's gonna flake. I need to go inside and get a fork. All right, watch this. I think this fish is done. See how it's flaking with a fork and the thickest part? It is done. Probably been on the grill maybe five minutes total. All right, here's our finished product without the pesto, of course. And here's our pesto. Now, as far as the pesto goes, a little bit goes a long way. Just want to kind of smear it across the top of the fish. All right, before I started the fish, I started some potatoes. Just really simple potatoes with butter and cheese. I threw those in the oven for about 30 minutes. Should be perfect. All right, so a very simple meal, but hey, that's what you want a lot of times when you come back from fishing. Something that's just easy to throw together, and this certainly is. And believe me, it is going to be quite tasty. And to sample it, we've got Joel just in from a hard day at work, so he's hungry, but still, he'll be honest. Believe me, he always is. That's really good. The pesto is really good. Delicious. Does it work with bass? Fantastic with bass. And redfish, of course. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video and at least got a new dish out of it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. Until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.